Welcome everybody to another Heroes of the Storm video on Color TV. Today we're going to look at another Hero League adventure and this time to the left side in blue we have Alex the Pro G on ETC this time. Knock on Taranda for the stun combo between the two of them. Deus Master on Thrall, Shad on Zul'jin uh, and Kyokia on, I have no idea how to pronounce that properly, <laughs> on Rhaegar and to the right side for the red team it's Gribo on Zebo, Dark Omicron on Falstead, Shamzik on Brightwing, Simus on Ragnaros and Valbeat Box on Diablo. This is going to be a fun match. Once again, of course, this is a Hero League game that we're currently seeing here. As you can imagine, with HGC 2017 coming up very soon, most of the teams are currently scrimming. There's no real tournaments that can be showcased, and as you would think, they don't really want their scrim games to be shown publicly on a YouTube channel so that the opponent can uh, steal, or maybe not steal the strategies, but at least like, scout them out properly. So therefore, we're going to look at a couple of more Hero League games in the near future here. And in this one today, we have once again Ragnaros and also Sul'jin. And that is actually quite important here since both of the heroes have been very new additions to Heroes of the Storm. And we already see a bit of a change in a lot of the builds in the past few weeks. At this point already, the combo with the stuns coming into play, by the way, for the blue team that attempts, of course, to capitalize heavily on that ETC setup. Alex already waiting in the bush here, waiting for that setup. Can't really get the stun follow-up from Toranda in this case, though, so they can't really confirm the kill. Here. But the setup that they're running is quite merely heavier and we're seeing that in the last time quite a bit, or as stun heavier I should say. We have ETC to Randa, the potential follow up with a wolf on the side of Thrall, and even Rhaegar with his slows can help out a little bit. Already Diablo going out there trying to maybe get someone into tower range to drain the life uh, the health bar. Didn't really work out this way. Up to the top lane, we have the solo laners. That's, of course, Ragnarok's and also Diaz Master is Thrall. And actually, Thrall is putting a lot of pressure on Ragnaros here, which is actually a little bit uncharacteristic because usually we have Ragnaros as a very strong solo laner. That extra heal that he gets and Sephora's in particular is absolutely devastating. He can wave clear super fast as well. So he's going to heal himself up here. But down to the bottom of the map after Fawcett already died, we have still a stun comp against Diablo and that is the end of him, the frontliner for the red team destroyed, and that means that both of the shrines here in Dragonshire will be in the hands of the blue team. Another thing that I want to point out here quickly is that a lot of the pro players have actually started to stream again, and some of the streams are absolutely fantastic. One of the best, in my personal opinion, when it comes to uh, just educating the viewers is also Alex's stream. So if you're ever tempted to hop on a live Twitch stream and you want to check those boys out, the link is in the YouTube description, so you can check him out there. He doesn't really have regular streaming hours, so you should probably leave him a follow so that you are getting notified whenever he's online. But personally, I have to say that he's one of my favorite streams to watch next to streams like uh, the Fnatic Boys with Breeze, Quarknix, and Smexy. But in this game here, we have a 4-0 already in kills. We missed one or two of them. My apologies for that, but there's a lot happening on the map here. And we have a lot of things to focus on. Haven't even talked about Sul'jin yet. But as you can see here, the first Dragonite ended up as already called in the hands of the blue team. So they get that quite easily. It's very early on, so not really too much that they can do with it. But they confirm another kill against Diablo. So these stuns are really working extremely well for Alex. And they have also another kill confirmed against Brightwing. The early game impact that we are seeing with ETC is definitely there and this is something that you always have to keep in mind when you are playing against such a stun comp that if you move too far out that you will find yourself in trouble, especially during the laning phase. So one of the things that you can definitely do when you are facing an ETC composition is trying to play a little bit more passive when you don't have vision on him on the map. And that's something that the red team neglected fairly, uh, like quite a bit. Once again you can see Ragnaros for example just moving in, he gets the full stun comp, Ragnaros is immediately dead and that's a 7-0 in kills already. So if you're playing against any kind of setup that is heavily relying on early game stuns and snipes and make sure that you just move very carefully on the map if you don't have vision on them. If you know of course that ETC Tyrande is currently located at the bottom of the map then you are free to roam up at the top but uh, if you don't have any vision you should be very careful where you move out to and especially when you're starting to face check pushes. Once again a kill confirmed Dark Omicron going down on the false stat here. And at least for now, the blue team is actually looking at a very easy game. But I mean, you know me, I wouldn't really cast this game. It was completely one-sided. So let's see how what's going to happen there, who is in the end going to win this. We have already Brightwing in trouble here in the mid lane, and Alex is just roaming lane after lane. 
And so far he's doing extremely well on the hero here. It's actually interesting because uh, Alex during the stream also has talked a little bit about uh, ETC and said that he himself is not really a fan of the hero and thinks uh, that ETC is actually, that his personal ETC play is actually quite bad. So uh, in the early game that is not really evident. The stun comps that are being set up by him and Nock have led to so many kills already. And already another one confirmed, this time without the help of ETC though, who's currently in the mid lane and roams around to see if he can maybe get a slide against false set and has to pick up the experience here in the mid. We haven't really touched on the builds just yet, but now that the level 7 talents have been reached and blue team is looking at an early level 10, let's go over those real quickly. For ETC, pretty normal style what we're having from Alexia. Block party taken on one, the loudspeakers then later on, and we're also seeing the echo paddle. So that's what you see from most ETC players. There's a couple of variations, of course, but up to the top again, the stun lock, and down goes Ragnaros. And we have also Diablo in a bit of trouble. Brightwing is trying to help out here, but it's not that easy. Alex with good body blocks against him, and very well done here, waiting with a W and a face melt until uh, Diablo pushes him in and then pushing him back immediately. So great timing on the side of Alex, having the patience here to not spam his spells out, but actually wait for Diablo to make his move before he then uses his. The rogue abilities and another Dragon Knight are the reward for that killing spree that we see in the early game. And with this we are now seeing Suljin of course with the Taz Dingo. We have the Starfall on the side of Toranda and at the same time Rhaegar with Bloodlust. And ETC not with a choice just yet. Alex is still with the option to go for the Mosh Pit here, even though on this map the uh, more dominant talent is definitely going for the stage dive. Down to the bot lane, Suljin has actually taken out Nazebo, so in this case the Witch Doctor is during the short straw. And in the top lane, Ragnaros is falling as the Dragon Eye is still going ham in that mid lane. So Ragnaros definitely having a few more troubles against Thrall than you might think. Thrall of course being an excellent solo laner, but at the same time Ragnaros usually excelling at that too. And that's something uh, where he is currently going a little bit too far out and Dia's Master is taking advantage of that. Once again a kill and that is 15 kills against one by now. The only hero that died was actually Rhaegar here in the middle. Earthquake of course still also available and they could maybe even use that to breach through, but for now they have only taken a fort. Now keep in mind that those Dragon Knights are of course scaling over time. That means like you facing a very early Dragon Knight is of course unfortunate, but it's not the end of the game since those Dragon Knights are usually quite easily bursted down. When we're looking at the talents on the side of the red team, you can tell that Nazebo already completed his uh, quest talent on level 1, going into a full spider build here on uh, his case right now. We're going to try and throw those out. The level 20 for Nazebo, of course, is especially good if he has enough stacks. And when we're looking at Ragnaros, he is going for a more Sulfuras based build, which makes total sense here. Going for Sulfuras Hunger, having the hand of Ragnaros on 7, and at least with the Catching Fire here, one of the quest talents, uh, one of the two that he has, nearly completed him now as well. Or at least halfway through. Diablo going for the normal build that you see for most players, but there's the Earthquake as Thrall engages once again. In comes ETC, going a little bit deep here even, and is getting a double slide through. Very well done. It's a triple kill now, and a quad as Nazebo falls victim to that onslaught that is the bot lane. 19 kills against one, and a three level lead in a complete early game stomp, with Dark Omicron being the only survivor here. Alex with a great stage dive here, isolating the backline, waiting with a power slide, not spamming it out as you see most ETC players do, but just simply use the stage dive and immediately go for a Q stun. He waited out, used his positioning to get a double stun out of it, and that then resulted in a double kill on top of it. Looking at the talents now, I was talking about Diablo a little bit, and uh, normally you will see the front of uh, the from the shadows uh, from nearly every single build. We're having the Soul Shield as a level seven, ta seven talent, which is one of the most important talents for Diablo these days to be just like that unkillable beast at that front line. But on level one, we have Bulwark, and there's actually like a couple of different approaches to the level one talent, where especially the extra heal from fountains and health globes sometimes sees a bit of a priority. The downside of taking that talent is that you rely even more heavily on your soul stacks and of course when you don't get access to a fountain or to any of those globes then it is a bit of a problem most of the players these days go still for bulwark which is an absolutely um, insane talent to take because you can just get so much resistance especially when later on you have the soul shield as well but for diablo it's fairly important that you keep your souls together you don't really just want to die and then you revive immediately and then be completely soulless uh, just simply because you lose a lot of the survivability that you would otherwise have so diablo is 
currently still trying to get the stacking process going here. He died a couple of times there already and is really dependent on getting that resistance since the red team is playing with only a single frontliner. So Diablo is incredibly important for them at this point. We have Nazebo going straight for a good old Gary. Gary the Gagunshan is going to join us in those fights and Brightwing has already realized that with all those stun comps that we are seeing coming out, first of all, Cleanse of course, of course a must have for him, but at the same time they are also heavily dependent on having uh, the uh, Emerald Twin to just like push the opponent back. When we talk about those builds, the one thing that I want to highlight real quickly is that Falstead in particular went of course for an auto attack build here. Well, maybe not of course, but yeah, the auto attack build in this case definitely making sure that the late game is going to be a little stronger. Oh, Alex with the interrupt! Nice! The barrel used by Dark Omicron and then the W interrupt against it, but Brightwing jumps in, helps Falstead out, but that was still a very good move. And probably caused a bit of a shock moment here for Falstead. When we talk about the talents on the, the blue team, the one thing that we haven't really talked about yet is Suljin, and we have him on level 1 with a bone slicer. Still a talent that you see every now and then, but of course the auto attack stacks are very, very popular with Suljin player these days. Troll's blood for the increased regeneration, making him a little bit more independent from Tyrande and Rhaegar. Not 100% certain if that talent was really needed in this game since they already have a double support but trying to keep that survivability up either way with even the forest medicine taken. Now once again, Alex way too deep this time with a stage dive though. That's of course one of those problems that you sometimes have with ETC that you dive in too far and that slide there at the end was also not the best that we've seen from him in this game though. So in this case, ETC just dying after Thrall was also eliminated, so a double kill against them right now as they are trying to push through with another Dragonite. That of course is going to result in Dragonite number 3 for the blue team to be a little bit less useful than the previous ones. But they still have that 2 level lead and of course a gigantic lead when it comes to the kill count. 20 kills against 3. Tyrande is backing full into Ranger, full into the Owl build, um, you build the Sentinel of course, the cooldown reduction thanks to the level 1 talent and then Pierce later on. It's just making sure that you can spam your abilities out quite nicely and you also get at the same time then the reduction on your heroic abilities cooldown which is absolutely fantastic if you want to use that Starfall in conjunction with the Earthquake during those fights. So there's a lot of synergy for the blue team that they're currently trying to use. Rhaegar also trying to provide some extra slows by not only going into the Colossal Totem, but then also the Earth Grafts Totem on level 16. And Suljin on 16 going into Lacerate this time actually. Having a little bit more slow in there, so there's a lot of control on the side of the blue team that they're trying to use again. Brightwing with very good Emerald wins here so far. ETC falls as a result of it. But down goes Ragnaros as well. So in this case, we could really see how they are, um, the red team is currently trying to really work against what the blue team has been doing all game long. Every time Alex starts to jump in, Brightwing tries to position herself to get a good Emerald Wind in. Dark Omicron also present with the attempt to get the Gust off and then just isolating one of the targets and going straight for it. So they're still fighting tooth and nail to keep themselves in the game. And so far, they have actually reduced the gap in experience between the two teams significantly. Are still looking at a disadvantage, obviously, but will eventually reach that level 16 talent that would allow them to fight on even levels with the opponent. Brightwing herself with the Ice Block on 13 also has a little bit more survivability and is not really that vulnerable anymore to those jump-ins. Another thing that we have to also quickly note is that we have now the Guardian Toads taken at the same time. So a little bit of armor for Nazebo as well. The team is really starting to spec into a bit of survivability and just attempting to uh, keep themselves alive for as long as they can. Going with the Emerald Wind here to isolate targets, just attempting to get a bit more resistance in those cases. And by now with the level 16 talents we might see them actually continue that trend. Of course Ragnaros going straight for the Cauterized Wounds right now. We have also the Giant Scorcher taken full Sulphuras here for him, which is like the most common build that you see these days. Nazebo going straight for the Spiders again for the Spider Colony and uh, the additional uh, cooldown recharge. That in particular is also going to be really nice for him to just like spam out that poke damage that in a long and drawn out battle can really give you the win. Diablo even heading it straight in again with a bulwark with a shadow charge. Here comes the earthquake though. Alex needs to jump in, goes in with a stage dive. Brightwing immediately again with a quick Emerald Wind. But the kill count should rise up for the blue team as they confirm too. They lost Thrall. 
But they might be able to get another one here as well. Very good engage for the blue team once more. Brightwing doing whatever she can, but not able to keep uh, the rest of the team alive. Greebon is Nezebo going straight for another zombie wall, but this one trapped him as well. That was not really the intent, I suppose. Four kills in the end confirmed and 25 against five kills right now. Shad just going completely crazy on Suljin just in those fights going completely off on the opponent's team and this also shows in his damage he's at 48,000 and therefore the best damage dealer in the game at this point another Dragonite in the mid lane currently taken now as well so Nock is starting to move through and they will aim for a keep with this one we're looking at the damage output and on top of that Nazebo is at 37,000 Ragnaros only on 26 showcasing that he had a pretty uh, rough game. Especially when you look at the kill count, it becomes a bit evident that Simos is having trouble on the solo lane here, or had in the early game. Didn't really have that minimap awareness that you oftentimes need to make sure that you're not falling victim to these gangs. Diablo also a bit far out. He struggles with being the only frontliner here for his team, and as we said before, once that he loses his soul stacks, he is actually a lot weaker, so he needs to try and make sure that he survives. A great defensive tool is of course also Ragnaros right now, going for the Molten Core here, and that is making the life of the blue team a lot harder when they're trying to push through through one of those keeps. So Nock is moving into the mid lane again. He's not really going to get too much done here, but he's at least trying to get that Fire Breath out and uh, damage those minion waves. The kill count or the death count with a 7 and 7 on Ragnaros and Diablo, those are definitely the two weak points in the early game for them, but they are currently just attempting to make up for that, and especially Ragnaros is just fantastic when it comes to defense. So even though the blue team already had four Dragonites, they couldn't get a keep yet. We're still only 15 minutes into the game though, so it's still quite early, but those Dragonites from here on out are going to gain a lot of momentum and a lot more pushing power. At this point, Level 20 is all the blue team wants. They want to have their Storm Talents, they want to have the 20s, and they want to, of course, capitalize on those as much as they can. Down to the bottom, we have camps taken everywhere. Alex, of course, taking his position up at the top once again. And this is actually quite important. You could see him here hide in one of those bushes, and you might have noticed that a couple of times during the game. It's basically just him playing with uh, the vision. He wants to soak the experience at the top lane, but he doesn't really want to show himself, because as long as he's not visible on the minimap, the red team has always to think about, okay, where is he? He should be top, he should be soaking, but if he's with the rest of the team and hiding somewhere, Alex can simply set up with a quick stun, with a quick slide, another gank, and then initiate a fight. So the red team has to play very, very careful when they don't see him on the map, and therefore always trying to hide in those bushes, trying to hide vision, unless, of course, Falstatch checks the bush and sees him there. But him being on the off lane is, of course, also a result of using stage dive. You want to get the extra experience with ETC, so he is going to jump into the rest of the team fight. So the rest of the team has to stay as four, which they've been doing so far the entire game. And every single time a fight starts, Alex jumps into the back line. But had a bit more trouble lately uh, since Brightwing and especially a false set as well. But of course, waiting for that engage and then trying to isolate him here. But the level 20s are in play right now, and that means that we have, first of all, a Storm Shield taken. We have actually two, one of Toronda and another one on Rhaegar. Whereas Alex went straight for the ball of the storm with his ETC play. We're seeing the Nexus plays on Thrall, which is actually a bit interesting. Normally you would expect Thrall, <laughs> right? <laughs> Alex with a quick jump here, wants the camp. You would normally expect Thrall. Oh, the engage! Wow, but Seamus gets away. What does he? Uh, nope, <laughs> not quite. Bolt of the storm and a power slide confirm the kill. But yeah, DS Master on his Thrall should have probably gotten into the Earth and Shield. It's a powerful talent to take. Going into Nexus Frenzy can of course help you as well, but they have so many slows already that I personally feel the slow alone is not really reason enough to make that work. If you then go into the extra damage with the auto attacks, that can of course help. But overall, I really think that with the setup that they're running here, the Earth Shield would have been pretty much fantastic for them. The one thing that the red team does really do a great job with is getting the value out of those camps. We've seen the camp at the top lane already pushing through a little bit earlier, and the one at the bot lane just eliminated the fort, the first one that they were able to crack, by the way. But now we have also another Dragonite, and this time Alex is uh, in it. We have also, by the way, Suljin with the ensnare here not going for the improved test Dingo, which was a bit of a surprise when I saw it, because I personally expected him to use that, since he's uh, putting out an, an enormous amount of damage, especially with the Bloodlust, and that feels like a free health bar to me. Alex with a drop on the keep, and this is looking really good for the blue team, but once again, Ratnaros is there with a Molten Core, and it's a quad combo that he gets, gets the stun in, 
and then the full damage, and that's the end of Tyrande as Alex is still trying to escape here. Went for the core, tried to damage it there, sliding away, Gribo missing the zombie wall, and Ragnarok is still raining fire on everybody here. Great play by him. So that hero once again coming through for the team. We have 26 kills against 6 by now. And you can really tell that the blue team is struggling a bit to finish this. They are always attempting to move in for a quick kill, but Ragnaros and his trade are giving them a lot of trouble. And right now we have 20 versus 20. So once again, it's the same talents. Diablo jumping in, taking on 20, the Hellgate, which already proved quite useful. And the wind tunnel being used here as well, plus the continuous wins. ETC completely locked down. I mean, that was the worst case scenario. Trapped in the middle here, and then Dark Omicron with the wind tunnel just completely completely barreling him into the corner and Brightwing even using the Emerald Wind when those, when those wind tunnels expired because he simply said hey better safe than sorry I want this guy dead and they confirmed the kill. So now they push through that bot lane and try to get one of their own. Nazebo by the way with a vile infection now and that is one of the most important talents on the hero. Once that you get that and you have 150 stacks on the Voodoo Ritual you are just increasing your damage tenfold. It's absolutely insane how much value can you can get out of it. The heroic difficulty now also taken, so Molten Core with a reduced cooldown, and that is insane for them for defensive purposes right now. But keep Nazebo and his damage a little bit in mind, 46,000 at this point of us already getting a little bit of value, but this is definitely going to go up quite significantly. Besides that, Shad is still utilizing his Suljin to take the top damage in the game, 58,000 for him. He's also the only hero in the entire game that hasn't died yet. So Suljin so far with zero deaths, Ragnaros is leading the charts with eight, not really an award that you usually try to take. Up to the top lane, another fort is falling, and yeah, 26 kills against seven, but the red team still very resilient with this. Blue team very eager, of course, to finish it, but at least it shows quite a little bit of, yeah, a bit of fighting spirit what we're having on the red team side. So once again, they're just like setting up. Alex, Alex is taking the top. Keep in mind, once again, hiding in the bush, trying to make sure that the opponent doesn't have vision on him so that they don't know from where exactly he's going to move in if he's with the team somewhere hidden and trying to set up and engage or not. Now we have also, again, another Dragon Knight potentially. Alex jumping in a little bit deep, actually, missing his engage. And in this case, nearly falling victim to Diablo, who was hiding in the shadows. He really charged from the shadows this time. And that looked scary for a moment. Ragnaros again in play with a Molten Core and is going straight to push everybody out of that mid lane. The top has to be defended though because there's another camp trying to go through that uh, particular wall here with the towers and that could become a big problem. Besides that, Rag is starting to take the top numbers for the red team with 48,000 now confirmed for him. Even uh, going uh, straight ahead of Nazebo with the damage output. And he himself is not just simply moving over to uh, sulfur us the hell out of that particular wave, so that should be an easy one for him. Grebo still helping out there as well, trying to make sure that also his spiders are getting a little bit of value, trying to get also additional stacks. Down to the bot lane, ETC jumps in, but once again Dark Omicron, can he get the save? Diablo is about to fall and indeed goes down, and Dark Omicron at this point still had his Mighty Gust cooldown up. I actually think that he... Uh, was at that point uh, just hoping that he would get it through, but it was not the case. Diablo therefore falls, had enough souls, but of course now lost, lost a lot of his survivability. We talked about that earlier. Has to just reclaim the soul stacks, and he's already going to work at that. The ult is ready once again for a false stat, but in this case they lose another Dragonite. And this is really starting to become a bit worrisome. In the early game, losing that DK is not really the end of the match, as I already stated. But if you lose a Dragonite this late in the game, that is most of the time lights out. So Alex already looking and moving through the mid lane, dodging the Zebo Spiders here for now. And they're just waiting for the team to be together and for a minion wave to pull through. They want to go for that core, but they have to start to engage as a team here. And you can already tell that Ragnaros is just waiting for that engage. The pings on the core are already happening. They're starting to move in. The poke continues with Grieb on his spiders. Here's once again Ragnaros trying to see that he can get the trade through. And he does before there's anybody to interrupt. Here comes Diablo with the combo as well to run. They're immediately falling victim to that attack. And it's Diaz Master who dies next. Molten Core once more coming into play. Dark Omicron going for the wind tunnel, trying to confirm a third kill against Rhaegar, who's barely getting away here. Brightwing is falling, so good counter kill, but Rhaegar is actually not out of this just yet. And Diablo is going in with the Hellgate. 
with his Bolt of the Storm variation trying to take him down. That didn't happen. Sulji now falling for the first time at the bottom of the map. We're up to the top. We are seeing another push with minions coming through and Alex is still on the run. The core still not taken down and especially that level 20 talent for Ragnaros plays of course a massive role here. That reduced cooldown is allowing Ragnaros to do just so much in the later stage of this game. And now the blue team is actually three man down and faces a big problem and that's a push at that bot lane where we are seeing Gribo, Simos and Dark Omicron together with Diablo moving straight through and that is an easy keep for them as you can tell. So they are moving in, get an easy snipe on the keep and that makes it pretty even on the map now. 28 kills against 10 so far in the game but who keeps counting when you actually are able to take down your opponent's structures and especially those keeps. Bot lane is going to start to pressure quite heavily now against the blue team whereas the mid lane is still the one where the keep was taken down on the side of the red team a little bit earlier here. Damage output, of course. Another thing that we want to highlight here. And as promised a bit earlier, Nazebo is really starting to skyrocket. Keep in mind, the last time that we actually checked him out, he was roughly at 48,000. Now he's at 69,000 damage. Well, the Vile Infection on 20 definitely playing a huge part in this. We have Suljin at 74,000, still the top damage dealer in the game. But if Nazebo is able to get those particular poke skills out with his level 20 talent, that empowers it, then you can imagine how those numbers are going to rise here. So he's currently taking the top numbers in siege damage in the entire game, and at least for his own team, the hero numbers as well. When it comes to the deaths, he still struggles a bit. Alex here wants to make it another one. Goes in, Thrall already with the combo, Earthquake and Bloodlust, but there comes the Starfall, and Diablo is able to take down ETC again. Alex a bit too fouled here. I said again earlier, he criticized his own play during the entire game a lot and said that he's really unhappy with his personal performance on ETC in general. And one of the criticisms on the hero that he definitely had was that in the late game, ETC is just not as useful as he is in the early game when those setups for the kills and the roaming is such a great tool for a team to have. So him being in those situations, he just exposes himself a bit too much and gets taken out here. Thrall tried to follow up with an earthquake, but was a bit too far away to really help out in that case. And with ETC dying, the team, of course, had to retreat. It was a nice engagement that they had there, but the rest of the team just wasn't ready in time. And even with those Storm Shields, or especially with those, you would actually imagine that they're able to just keep the team alive a little bit more. But this could be, theoretically, a Dragonite for the red team. Uh, the bottom of the map, we now have the one uh, temple taken, or the one shrine taken by the blue team. But if they can claim that and maybe force a fight yet, yeah, it's a 4 versus 5. ETC can jump in. He has the stage dive ready, so he can always make that a 5. A nice move! Good job by Thrall here. Stopping Diablo in his tracks right away. Looking at the damage output, 76,000 already by Nazebo. There's a very high chance that he's going to overtake Suljin as well by the end of the game, depending on, of course, who dies first here. Alex is now aiming once again for the top, trying to get the Dragonite for his team. And by, <laughs> I mean, 26 minutes in, you just want to right-click the core and end that game, as you can imagine. So with this being said, we have the red team starting to just like move across, going to the bottom and trying to play that that trying game here, trying to make sure that they get that. Besides that, we have pretty sick damage also on the side of Suljin himself. Another thing that I want to point out here was the and Falset, of course. Falset is at 58 damage on his auto attacks. He went into the AA build, which is actually quite strong here against ETC as the frontliner, of course, too. So he's just continuing to get those stacks together, and that really shows in the damage output that he's able to get. Of course, his job is also to really have that presence on the map, but right now he's doing fairly well with the single target damage. We're seeing again the fight down here, Thrall with the Earthquake. There comes Rhaegar, but immediately look at that, the wind tunnel into the apocalypse, well done here. Alex once more in that back line, but a potential kill here. Yes, it's Diablo that falls, but so does Suljin. Alex with good damage, but can he take down Brightwing now too? He can't, too much damage output from the Zebo that forces him back. Thrall is also falling, it's a 2 for 2 in this case. <laughs> Absolutely brutal fight here. And you can tell how Nazebo is having a massive impact now. He's at 95,000 damage. That vile infection is so strong. And oh, <laughs> Ragnaros trying to wreck them all. Going straight for Noka takes to run it down with a Meteor. Well played, yeah. Great play by him. 
So yeah, it's really great fights that we are seeing right now. Alex was mostly busy in the back line here, trying to put the pressure on. They nearly confirmed the kill against Brightwing, that in the end they were not able to secure. But that was a pretty brutal one. Diablo struggling hard, being at nine deaths already. And there's the kill, but a nice wall! And Rega barely gets out of this one. Oh, that looked like Rega and maybe even Alex would even fall here. So Nazebo dying, but he is not making it easy for them. 20, sorry, 14 kills against 31 by now. And we are seeing Brightwing guarding the middle of the map. We have a big push coming through the bot lane right now as Thrall revives. And in the middle, yep, here it is. And Alex channels the Dragonite and gets it. And guys, in case that you were wondering, Brightwing doesn't do damage with a Polymorph. Did not go for an auto attack against the channeling ETC. Only used the Polymorph and Polymorph itself does not interrupt the channel. So the Dragonite still goes through the blue team and they are pushing through now. Attempting of course to finally end this game. 29 minutes in, we're nearing 30 as they are going straight for the core here. Again, Ragnaros going for the trade, Molten Core, and he tries to get those stuns in. Grebo is back on the Nazebo, and is trying to take them down. Molten Core already down. Oh, Brightwing and, and negating the Apocalypse more or less, trying to push them back. But Alex is already on the core itself. The Wind Tunnel pushing the Dragonite back though. Dark Omicron trying to guard the core here as Brightwing falls. 111,000 damage on a zero, but it's not enough. The core about to fall. And this is GG as the blue team finally claims victory in a roller coaster game here on Dragonshire.